what's y'all's response to it? Do you know? Uh, Your Honor, uh, we're not in agreement with it. The defendant had a another case that was dismissed as part of the him uh, pleading on the motion to revoke. He had a second degree felony that was dismissed as well as a right. misdemeanor uh, UCW. All right, 21-37-207 is called the State of Texas versus Alan J. Watson III. That's you, sir? Oh. Yes, sir. Present with Mr. Dusler, your attorney and the state's attorney. Earlier, you were... Sentenced on October 30th, 2023. For the uh, second degree felony of burglary of a habitation, you were sentenced to 10 years in prison. And a motion for imposition of community supervision or motion for probation uh, to change this from confinement to a probation term was filed by your attorney, Mr. Dusler. And here we are on, uh, this was filed on 11-6, so five months have passed by. It's not yet 180 days, so it is a timely filed uh, motion. The state is going to contest this, but go ahead, Mr. Dusler. Your Honor, this motion was filed uh, at the court for recommendation at the time. Uh, he was, uh, his probation was revoked in October of last year, and he was sentenced uh, to 10 years TDC. It was primarily revoked because of drug issues, uh, which he has attempted to address. And the underlying case itself, the burglary of habitation, basically was drug related as well, where he was found uh, in one of his neighbor's uh, uh, homes asleep late at night. Uh, there was a question of whether there was any intent to burglarize, but uh, because he was found there at the court, uh, uh, and, and everyone everyone felt that it was appropriate to uh, to have him placed on probation at the time. Uh, he's, as I understand it, he's done well while he's been in prison and uh, feels like that he can successfully complete probation. He's asking for it to grant this motion. Okay, earlier in the case, uh, a motion to revoke probation was filed and I don't know why it's not back in August and the defendant pleaded true to allegations one and two of the motion in uh, on August 24th those being uh, committing the offense of illegal possession of a controlled substance and unlawfully carrying a weapon and Uh, therefore, the defendant's deferred or unadjudicated probation was revoked. He was then found guilty of the underlying crime of burglary of habitation and sentenced to 10 years in prison. So here we are. What says the state in response? Uh, Your Honor, the state is obviously in opposition because the uh, defendant pleaded true to committing the office of possession of controlled substance, second degree felony while he was on probation. And that case was dismissed in consideration for the defendant being uh, sentenced to the penitentiary in this case, as well as a misdemeanor uh, unlawful carrying of a weapon that was also dismissed in consideration for the defendant being sentenced in this case. Okay, one and two, were those ever filed? Uh, allegations one and two, the possession of controlled substance, unlawfully carrying a weapon on or about February 15th of 2023. A year yes, ago. Your Honor. It was indicted. They were, they were indicted they were, and then they were later dismissed. Yes, sir. As in agreement of this. Well, there was no agreement. It was it was just dismissed by the state. There was no agreement. At the time. It, it, we dismissed it in consideration for him being 
sentenced at that time, uh, not holding the case out there uh, if he wasn't going to. All right. Um, so, if well, what's to prevent the state from resurrecting those cases? There's no deal. I don't, I don't was think reached. they were. I don't think they were filed by petitioners with prejudice. Okay, so they could refile them if they wanted they to. to. If you're two felony offenses. Well, no, one was a step One's a UCW. That was a misdemeanor. What? What was in the controlled substance? Meth. And my recollection also was that he had uh, uh, stated to the court that he had been in rehab uh, after that possession case, and the court took that into consideration in uh, in sentencing him and you know, considering a motion for shock probation. Now remember this was found in the child's child's backpack in the cargo area of the vehicle. The meth was being transported via child's back backpack, which is pretty low. All right, you want to say anything? Yeah, Lynn, no, it was a very humbling experience. I apologize for coming back in the courtroom again, so I made a big mistake and I just... Well, it was a series of mistakes. You, you made yes. a mistake when we first gave you that chance on yes, burglary sir. of a habitation. That's... Yes, sir. And then you weren't on probation long before you pick up two you know, a felony offense and a UCW. Yeah, but it was, I mean, it has all this, all the elements of drug trafficking. <laughs> what, what kind of probation are you on when you, you're, when you're doing that? Um, what are you asking for, Brian? I'm asking that the court uh, grant the motion uh, and place him back on probation, let him continue his probation, which was originally granted in 2008. State and the state's position, yes. Just that the court uh, uphold the original sentence that was uh, handed down. I, I don't have anything really in, in my lap that get, shows any reason why that should be granted. Other than other than what we've done in the Mark State, you're on what's in the file. It's denied. Mm -hmm. Serious offense, but more serious is drug trafficking and then using child backpacks as a method of a drug trafficking tool. That's on my watch. That is all. <laughs> the motion is denied. Thank you. Don, what do you have next? That's all. That's all. Thank you. Sure. I have Daniel Cranmer. Um, and
Uh, yes, sir. I believe Mr. Choate's in for Mr. Floyd. Yes, Judge. Okay, cause number 20-34861 is now called the State of Texas versus Daniel Joseph Cranmer. That's you, sir. Yes, sir. And um, I have a motion filed by John Floyd and Chris Show, attorneys of record for the defendant. And you are Mr. Show. That is correct, Judge. And where's Mr. Floyd today? Mr. Floyd was in court in Harris County. Uh, he is on his way back to the office, um, but uh, he had court in Harris County. All right, there's a motion to withdraw that's filed. Please uh, summarize it for me, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Uh, primarily, there was a legal services contract in which a trial fee became due upon the case being set for trial. That happened back in 2021. Uh, numerous reminders were sent to Mr. Cranmer along with phone calls. Um, it ended up being that he would not respond to our emails or our phone calls, which created uh, some conflict. And the couple of times that he did respond, he said that he had the money, he just wasn't going to pay it. And that began to create resentment between the firm and him. And we're at the point now where we've never filed a motion to withdraw for failure to pay fees, but we've finally done it after my 13 years of working with Mr. Floyd because the relationship is irrevocably damaged because we do not rely, we cannot rely on his word and it creates problems for us taking anything that he has said at face value, Judge. All right. <laughs> Generally, uh, the, the court is sympathetic toward issues on pay, but this one, in all cases, are circumstance-based. This is a case that was filed, was indicted, going on, was well, three and a half years old, over three, three and a half, going on four years. The date of the event, in the indictment is 2010. We're, that's 14 years ago. This is continuous sexual abuse of a child, of a complainant in a serious case like this has to be thought of as well. Are we saying we want to grant the motion, have the defendant start over in finding an attorney, and someone's going to talk to the complainant and say, I know this is 14 years old. You're going to wait another four or five years. The we date, understand the. No, no. When when were y'all hired? What was the date you were hired, please? In approximately 2020. And now, when, when is the trial? When is the trial date? April. I may. Uh, In April two weeks. 15. Two weeks. Yes, sir. April 15th. So you filed it on. April 1st, as we are coming up to a, a case that's almost four years old, on the eve of trial on a continuous sexual abuse of a child, this is brought up to the court on something that, according to you, has been a systemic problem for years? We understand how it looks, Judge. I well, personally it, would have... It is. It's what it is. It doesn't. It's not what it looks like. It's what it is, isn't it? What's wrong with my analysis on that? We have never had to file a motion to withdraw for failure to pay fees. Um, the problem is that Mr. Cranmer uh, has finally pushed our final buttons and uh, we have had to file this because we no longer can rely on being able to communicate with him or to have any sort of good working relationship with him, Judge. We regret having to file it, but we had to file it. And we do understand that it is a delay um, in the case. 
However, we do not feel that there is any more of a working attorney client relationship at this point. And our concern is that if, depending on what happens to trial, if this came back at a writ, it becomes a problem for everybody as well because of the antagonism between us and Mr. Cranmer. I think that's something you're going to have to deal with. I, I just uh, find this inappropriate at the timing of this for something that you know has been bubbling under for a while on the eve of a serious, one of the most serious types of allegations in the penal code, continuous sexual abuse of a child, um, to tell me that y'all need to be released because of a problem that's been going on for years with your client. That's not timely, sir. Uh, I, I understand that we tried to give them every possibility to communicate with us and to, um, ob you know, meet his obligations on the, the contract. And oh, he how was the uh, child victim at this at the time of this younger than 14? Yes, sir. Okay, in a case like this uh, as well, <clears throat> in determining whether uh, relief is to be given in a case involving a sexual assault of a child younger than 17 years of age, such as in this, the court can consider the impact on the victim of the continuous, uh, of a continuance or a release at the eve of trial after years of representing a defendant. And the reason that you're giving me is something that is no different from the reason that existed years ago. And on the eve of a major trial like this, the court finds that it's not appropriate. It's not fair for all parties. And it certainly could have been dealt with long ago so that on the eve of trial, we don't start up from a cold start on a major case because any lawyer rehired in this it's going to take a while to prepare. Maybe we all know that. And we're talking now about a case that's going on, an event that occurred almost 15 years previously. And, and we're heading up toward four years from the indictment and several years your firm has been uh, representing the defendant. Judge, I will say for the record that uh, Mr. Floyd has been in touch with me on a continuous basis concerning this ever since uh, I've been on this case. And I know he's spoken to the previous attorney numerous times just to let the court know they have been working on the case. What does that mean? I just, just did that. This is just one of those that they've always been honorable with me. And, and I'm not I, saying and he's I, not. No, and I, just, I honestly believe it's just. They well, just, you're representing the state. What do you have to say about this? You've I, got I want to go to trial, Judge. I'm, I'm, okay. We, we've got a victim that needs to go to trial. You disagree with the, with the continuance. You want to move forward. Yes, sir. I understand their position, but I've got a complaining witness that's been waiting for numerous years to get this taken care of, and we're going to take care of it. All right, the courts uh, have ruled on motions to withdraw in the past, and I'm citing uh, a case, a recent case, uh, Reed versus State, where uh, the attorney similarly requested to withdraw for payment reasons. And
सकते हैं एंड इट वॉज एंड द ट्रॉ कोर्ट ग्रांडेड द मोशन टू विथड्रॉ देन the court of appeals ruled that the trial court abused its discretion in granting the trial attorney's motion to withdraw and the court's decision on a motion to withdraw is an abuse of discretion review standard and we could go there it's it's a never ending list of what factors can be used there's no real set litmus test but the disruption that may result in a trial proceeding as a result of the attorney's withdrawal uh is an issue but here it says the attorney's role if any in creating the need to withdraw you have been you've t- told me for years y'all have been having a payment problem but that was something y'all decided to address and stay with and deal with and then on the eve of the trial again when's the date set for this trial 15th doesn't we can have april in a week and a half on a major trial like this which generally takes a week or so to try uh I can't say that the attorney didn't help the attorneys didn't help in creating this problem that I have to deal with right now that's in my lap. what uh mr cranmer yes sir well you know you've had an issue paying your attorney i offer the best i can offer at this point which would be to use a combination of credit cards at the very last minute just because it's going to really destroy my financial situation unless i'm looking at being on the other side is one way or the other well like, you can imagine how your financial distress is is not something the court sympathizes with that's your problem like it's everybody's problem <laughs> finances everybody's problems but once again this thing has been around for almost four years this this serious matter and you've had other things you think are more important to pay for so no I don't I hate to get involved in a financial thing but what are you able to do to pay these people to help you what about funds sir sir what about me? how much are we talking about um on top of the old study thousand i've already paid they are requesting uh twenty thousand for the trial oh, well that's uh, i don't want to know the specifics how much are you able to pay at this moment have i had to pay right this moment i might have in your thousand. master plan you have about your credit card oh, situation how are you going to i should be able to pay it all by that by when by the we could try that's on marginal record oh okay okay he says did you hear that mr show i did judge and i apologize but this is just another example of how we can't rely on his statements because he's been oh. telling us all along that he can pay it uh, okay. well he's not going to dun me which is called dunning that's a term used when you try to fake people out about the money you're going to be held accountable and we're going to see where you are in uh a couple of weeks and i expect your oblig your obligations to be satisfied uh, based upon what you told me yes. we're going to have a hearing on this you're going to have to postpone this case for a couple of weeks but in two weeks 
you're going to either be good for your word or you're going to be good for your word in jail. I'll hold you in contempt because I'll rely on what you have to say. Uh, and we're not going to start from a cold start and you have an attorney have to get ready for months okay. and months on a case this old. They put in the time and uh, I expect, uh, and it's all fairness, you have an obligation. But I'm finding that by dunning them, you are also dunning the court and misleading the court on your obligations, which you will pay for if I find you don't honor them. So you take care of this because I don't want something to start over again on attorneys. You work with them. They're good lawyers, but don't lie about things. They need to be, they need to know where they stand as well. But this case needs, is it's too old. Yes, this needs to be I moved not, forward. My situation has changed, obviously. Everybody's got financial problems. Okay. Welcome to the planet Earth. We all have financial problems, but you figure, each of us have to figure them out. Every one of us have issues. Yes. Just, just to be clear, when we come back on the fifteenth, we're not we're not for trial. It's a hearing to see where we're at. Yes. Correct? Okay. That's so what I'm going to do. Mr. Floyd's office with some potential dates because scheduling with Mr. Floyd's office has it, has been somewhat difficult. It's it's been. He takes care of his position. Y'all are going to have to make special arrangements to get here for this trial because I'm not going to wait months. It's going to be just a few weeks, sir. Chris, do you understand? Yes, Judge. Sorry. You got your marching orders. Yes, Take sir. care of your obligations. We're going to see you back on uh, April 15th. And I want to hear some good news. And then it will specially, that case will be specially said. This is terrible. Anything else to add? No, Judge. Okay. I'll See everybody back on the on the fifteenth. Get a resetting, sir. Thank you, Judge. May I be excused? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Oh. Thank you.